Hoops Heaven proudly brings to you Basketball Hustle. But Ellis fumbled the ball. Two on the shot clock goes up a prayer. Yes! As he was falling to the ground. It's a three! He shot it literally from the hip. Definitely a highlight. Here come the Billikens. Four on two. McCall. Ellis. Left corner. We missed out. Bang! From way down under. Cody Ellis. Reddick brings low out away from the best. Stolen away by Cody Ellis. One man to beat. To the hole. He's fouled. Layup. Good. Whistle foul. Count the best. Ellis for the reverse. Oh, yeah. Through fingertips. What a move. Ellis drops in a bomb. I love seeing Cody Ellis coming out. Feeling good. Ellis. Cody Ellis. Ellis, pull up jumper! Cody Ellis, bang! Cody Ellis, can he stand and deliver? Cody Ellis! Now it's time for another episode of Hoops Heaven's Basketball Hustle. Hello and welcome to Hoops Evans Basketball Hustle, a special post-Christmas edition. Cody, for us to to get through, we've had 12 games of Christmas to get through in the NBL, so plenty for us to, to talk about, plenty to dissect, and we're getting to the business end of the season as well all of a sudden now. It's the run into the playoffs, and teams need to make their charge. Some teams are stumbling a little bit, some teams are making their statements, and we had the historic Christmas Day game to talk about. We've got the New Year's Eve games to look forward to, which you've been part of during your, your yep. career, Cody, so looking forward to getting your thoughts on those. Plenty to get through. A lot happening in the world of the NBL, as you can imagine, with 12 straight days of days of games. We finally got a break to, to record our show for this week. Yeah. I'm Chris Pike, and I hope everybody enjoyed their Christmas, and I hope you did too, Cody. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's uh, Yeah, hopefully everyone out there enjoyed their Christmas, uh, Christmas as, as well as you, mate. Um, hopefully everyone got to sit back and relax mm. and have a lot to eat. I know I certainly <laughs> did, and uh, probably won't be eating for the next week and a half now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, look, lots lots going on in the NBL, and it was uh, it was good to to be able to sit down and watch a game every day. So yes. uh, it's been really good. Yep, no chance to miss it if you're an NBL yeah. fan. So no. that that's a good thing. Um, a lot happening. We'll we'll dissect it all because it's uh, there's a lot to get through. But before we do, Cody, um, what is an Ellis family Christmas like? Oh, full on, <laughs> full on. Nah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's really a three day thing. You go with uh, Chrissy Eve, and then Christmas Day, and then Boxing Day. It's just. Uh, it's it's full on for, mm. for three days really all over the place. Um, Christmas Day is usually just at mum and dad sitting mm-hmm. by the pool yeah. and and hanging out, which is which is good. But uh, you feel exhausted after it. <laughs> uh, you need a break. Um, but yeah, look, it's uh, it's always a bit of fun. Your your parents' pool is famous. Like yeah. I remember the the Illawarra Hawks teammates you had always looked forward to coming to Perth so they could yeah. go and visit the pool. I mean, is it it's become a bit of a tradition just to. Just to hang around that place, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Between that and mum's cooking, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the, the place has become a uh, bit of a, a stomping ground. So, no, it's, it's, it's um, I mean, I grew up in that pool, so mm. I've, I've loved it. And now my little fella is, is doing <laughs> the same, which is which is uh, awesome to see. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's uh, a lot less crowded than the beach. So, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, we certainly enjoy <laughs> going around there. How did Chase enjoy his Christmas? I loved it. Spoilt as always. Yeah. Um, Spoiled at home and then spoiled at mum and dad's. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, he loves it. And, you know, I think uh, it's 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 cool to see, um, especially remembering, you know, when, when we were younger and mm. growing up and how excited we were mm. and, and to see it on his face now is, mm-hmm. uh, is is really special. Everyone listening would have been following the adventures of your mother-in-law who was in town yeah. as well. Has she, has she got home safely? Yes, eventually. <laughs> eventually. Her, uh, her long flight got cancelled and had to, uh, had to move it back a bit. So, but no, she's, uh, she's back uh, home now and, and safe and sound and I'm sure enjoyed Christmas with, with the family mm. over there. Yeah, so she's back in St. Louis. Does St. Louis still feel like a second home to you and do you look forward to hoping to get back there sometime in the near, fu- near future? Yeah, it does, but it's been a while now. Yeah. So I haven't gone back uh, since Laura and I got married. Mm. Um, so that's uh, seven and a half years ago now. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a long time. Mm. So um, look, I, I, I certainly miss it. I've still got some really close mates that live over there mm. and haven't been able to catch up with them in a long time. And mm. it's it's always hard staying in contact, especially with the time difference. Yeah. Everyone's so busy. Everyone's got families now. Yeah. It's just uh, a different world. So look, I, I do look forward to getting back over there. Mm. Um, we are going to hopefully get over there and with the whole fam and do a whole Disneyland trip at some mm, point. Yes. But uh, 
yeah, that's uh, fairly expensive. So <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Got to save for a lifetime just to be able to do that. Oh, absolutely. All right, Cody. Um, we're here thanks to Hoop7, of course. And thank you to Hoop7 for making this show possible. And now that Christmas is out of the way, this is where to go to, to catch up on your mm. shopping. If you didn't get what you wanted for Christmas yeah. or if you do just want to treat yourself, head to hoop7.com.au or if you're in Perth, go to the, the store there on Murray Street and you won't be you won't be short on, on ideas to, to find in that store. And Probably between you, like we talked about last week, Cody, between you, Lauren, and Chase, there was probably plenty, plenty of presents under the tree from Hoop7. Oh, always, mate. Always. You know, it's, it's one of those things that uh, Lauren always gets annoyed when there's a new shoe dropping because <laughs> she knows I want to get it. Yes. So, no, look, I mean, they've got their Boxing Day sales going on for pretty much the whole week. Mm. So, uh, certainly get around that and uh, get in there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't recommend it more. And to be honest, even if they didn't bring this show, I would be recommending it because oh, it's a absolutely. it's a hell of a shop. I, I shopped there all the time before before we ever had this relationship. So highly recommend it. As soon as it opened, yes. the old Kicks One Hundred One store mm-hmm. under the the theatre there. Yeah. As soon as it opened, I was in there very quickly. And every time I went into the city, I couldn't help but visit and couldn't help but spend all my my money. And, exactly. And <laughs> nothing's changed. Um, but Cody, let's get into talking about the NBL, and we have to start with the Christmas Day game. There was a lot of a lot of build up to it, a lot of focus on it, and I think a lot of intrigue about if it would be a success or not. I think there was two parts to it: would enough people to turn up physically to make it worthwhile, and then would enough people watch it on on TV to make it worthwhile. Um, the numbers have come out, and more than seven thousand people turned out to Kudos Bank Arena to watch the Kings playing Melbourne United. So, I think the configuration of the building was that it was around, I think, just under ten thousand that could fit into mm-hmm. the building. So, I think in terms of attendance, you say that's a that's a big tick and enough people wanted to attend. And the viewership reach, whatever that means, <laughs> means yeah. Cody. But the number 300,000 next to it reads very very nicely. Yes. So I think those two measurements, we talked last week, what would make it a success? Do you think those numbers make it a success? Oh, for sure. And there was always going to be a grey area on what's <laughs> going to be a acceptable number mm. for it to be successful. Yeah. You know, you, They obviously didn't have a set number in mind, I'm sure, mm-hmm. because it's, it's hard to figure that yeah. out. Uh, 7,000 people at the game I think is really good. Yes. I think that's very impressive and that doesn't surprise me in Sydney um, mm. the way they've been going and the way they've been supporting their team. Mm. But yeah, the 300,000 viewership reach, you're right. <laughs> I'm, I think the NBL is playing with words there. But uh, look, if if there were 300,000 people you know, across Australia and even the world watching, then that's mm. uh, certainly a win. Yes. Um, I think because it was on free to air as well, correct? It was, yeah. I think that certainly helps. Yeah. You know, I think that's um, probably doubled their outreach, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, the, look, the, uh, the, the, that just helps you reach people that might not even realise the NBL's existing. You're oh, flicking sure. through, they might be flicking through the channels on Christmas night looking for something to do, and that's reach, trying to reach a new audience, which yeah. I think's the, the the goal. Oh, absolutely. And you know, games used to be on free to air, yeah. and I'm I'm sure they used to get massive numbers mm-hmm. watching. So. Yeah, I, I think I think overall it was a success. Um, you know, the the game itself probably wasn't the best game, mm-hmm. but I think to be able to sit down after your your Christmas lunch and, mm. and sit and watch, and uh, I think it was certainly successful. We talked last week about how as a as a player, especially if you're a Melbourne United player, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have been too thrilled for it. Yeah. Um, Chris Golding and Dave Vilo would never yeah. willingly miss a game of of basketball because no. they're such great professionals, but if they were going to miss one game and spend it at home with their family, that yeah. probably was the one to do. Yeah, I think it was. <laughs> it was. So uh, I'm not sure when they pulled out. If they, uh, in fairness to Chris, I don't think he was enjoying it too much. From all, he was pretty no, sick, and I think he was stuck in bed. So maybe he wasn't enjoying it. Down. But at the same time, he still was at home with his family. Right. Right. And yeah, it's it's got to be difficult. And obviously, massive shout out to all the players, all the staff on each team all the staff at the stadium, mm. you know, everyone that had to work that game, yeah. I think, is uh, deserves praise. And you're right, though. I think it was certainly the game to miss if you are <laughs> ever going to miss one. Yeah. How deflating was it for the game itself once we realised that Chris Golding wasn't playing? Oh, it was, uh, yeah, a bit frustrating because I thought it was actually going to be a really good game. Yeah. I think Melbourne has started to turn a bit of a corner yep. um, and playing some decent basketball now mm. and, and really pushing for that that five and six spot. But uh, you, you take Goulding out and then all of a sudden that's their outside threat's gone. And, and he's, uh, with Barlow as well, yeah. um, you know, because he kind of comes off the bench and he's really that only real sharpshooter yeah. <laughs> off yeah. the bench. So it, it meant Sydney could shrink the court. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what they did. That's exactly what they did. And, um, you know, left Tucker having mm. to shoot 
25 or 26 yes. shots or whatever he shot. Including 17 from, from three. From three, yeah. yeah. I mean, credit to him. I mean, he was aggressive. and He, he was. But you're probably happy for him to take that many threes at the same time. Oh, absolutely. And a lot of them were those pop behind threes mm. that, uh, you know, there's there's not too many people around the world that are really good at those. Yep. So, um, yeah, look, it, it was frustrating. Frustrating that he didn't play. But, uh, look, I mean, Sydney did what they do and took advantage and, mm. and ended up with the win. What a difference Xavier Cooks makes for the Sydney Kings. Yeah, I mean, have a look at how good they are without him. And yeah. Can you put into words just how much he means to that team? I mean, just his numbers alone, 24 points, mm-hmm. 11 rebounds, 7 assists, but he was just so far and away the best player on that yeah. floor. Yeah, he certainly was. And, you know, it's it's been no secret that we've thought that, you know, even, even last year, I mm-hmm. think. Uh, and he's just taken another step again this yeah. year. But... Uh, yeah, very quiet. <laughs> very mm. quiet night by his standards. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> no, it's still like, almost a triple double. Well, it was, yeah. you know, and, and he just goes about his business. You know, he's he's aggressive. He gets to the foul line. Um, he just controls the boards. And with the ball in his hands, he, he just knows what to do with it. Mm. You know, he's he, um, he knows when to attack. He knows when to find his teammates. And he's just someone that, you know, every team needs. Mm. Um, so, yeah, he's he's just been unbelievable this season. Actually, I'll, I'll finish on Christmas Day. So it now looks like the NBL is moving towards looking to play a doubleheader yeah. next next year on Christmas Day. And I feel, I feel like the only way that can work is if you play Illawarra against Sydney. Yeah. So then no one travels like we talked yeah. about last week. And then you play a throw down Melbourne, Melbourne and South East Melbourne. So then at least no one's flying yeah. for the game. So that seems to make sense. If mm-hmm. you've got one game in Melbourne, one game in Sydney. For sure. Not ideal for somebody that would then have to spend their whole Christmas day covering these games, but that's right. a, that's that's another an, another matter. Yeah. Um, but would you? What are your thoughts on on the prospect of that? Uh, it's it's a tough one, and I think with the numbers that came out of this year, it doesn't surprise me that they're already looking for a double header. Mm. You are right, though. I think it needs to be, you know, the the highway series mm-hmm. and then the the stoush as well. Yeah. So. Well, you don't want anyone having to fly <laughs> it's, Christmas yeah. Eve or Christmas Day, right? It it as successful as it was, you know, you you still do feel for those guys that mm. have to fly, and yeah. you know they miss Christmas Day. Um, but I mean, even even the day before, you know, with with the Phoenix, well, you know, uh, they, they flew home on Christmas morning. Yeah, so. I, I asked Simon Mitchell about that yeah. after the game on Christmas Eve, and he said that they have they don't couldn't get it out on no. on Christmas Eve night, so they had to fly home on Christmas Day. Yeah, and he was talking about missing. Missing, missing, kids opening missing his presents. kids opening yeah, their presents. Exactly. So it's it's frustrating. And, you know, I think we, we mentioned it in last week's show that it is entertainment, but at the end mm-hmm. of the day, we're all... They're human. They're all humans. <laughs> yeah. and they have families and they have kids. And, yeah. you know, the kids love this time of year and, mm-hmm. you know, families just, just enjoy each other's company this time of year. Yeah. So it's it's a tough one. It is a tough one. But, uh, look, I, I think it's almost a guarantee that there'll be a doubleheader like yeah. next year. But it, does it have to be those two games? Would I you be disappointed be. if it's anything else? I would be very disappointed if it was anything else, if someone else had to fly. and Yeah, I, I, I don't see why you couldn't do it, those two games. No, so, yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully it is. I actually feel like Perth would be a great place to do the game mm-hmm. because I think RAC Arena would be a great spectacle on Christmas yeah. Day. But I would never want to ask another team to, have no, to come, come no. over to, to do it. Yeah, exactly. It's a long way over <laughs> yeah. here. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I think you're right. I think that... RAC would be great for it. Mm. I think they could put on a heck of a show as they mm. always do. And yeah, you're right. They'd be, who do you ask over? No, you, yeah, <laughs> you, you, just, you couldn't do that to anybody. No. Um, all right. Um, the Sydney Kings, Cody. Um, I feel like no team is really standing out right now, but mm. are they the team to beat right now? Do, do, you, do you think? Uh, with a full squad? I think so. Mm. I think so. Um, yeah. It, those top couple teams have kind of fallen a bit back to earth and, um, you look at the next three. I mean, the Breakers, the Phoenix, and the Taipans, for different reasons, they're all faltering a little bit. They are. They are. So Sydney's kind of been that one that just keeps chugging along. Mm. Um, and, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that they've got everyone um, playing great either. Yeah. You know, I think DJ is... DJ's not shooting great, no, is he? he's, yeah. he's not shooting well at all. And it's obviously frustrating for him. Mm. But, um, you know, he, he doesn't give a whole lot other than that being that sharpshooter. No. I mean, he gives you energy, don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. Um, and he's that mongrel as well, <laughs> which is exactly what you know you're getting from mm-hmm. him. Um, but without him knocking those those threes down, it's it's um, th- they're still not humming on all cylinders, So, no. which is a scary thought. Mm. Um, 
but I mean, you know, you got Walton Jr. and Cooksey mm. just doing their thing, yeah. and it's all they really need right now. Everyone else just playing their roles. Well, so. Walton Jr. is an interesting one. We talked last week about how we hope he now stays aggressive after seeing what yeah. he did in that Phoenix game. He went back into his shell, shell a little yeah, bit. He did. He did. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, mm. or if he's got certain guys circled on the calendar of <laughs> I can go at him, Maybe. or um, or what's going on. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I do think Sydney is the team to beat right now. Yeah. Interesting question then. Who's the second best team right now? Because hmm. you look beneath them, the break is now, I mean, they've, we'll, I'll get to them in, in a little while. They've yeah. been through a lot lately, but they've also now lost three in a row. The Phoenix are missing four of their most <laughs> important players, and they, but they still were winning. The Taipans are, are a bit hit and miss right now. I mean, the Wildcats fault before, before probably losing to Brisbane, I might have said the Wildcats, the Wildcats almost exactly. the second best, but yeah. their fault, they, they had that slip up. The Jack Jumpers. You know they they had a good week, but then last week we were talking about how they were they were struggling as yeah. well with their fourth quarters. Um, who's the second best team? Flip of the coin and it depends mm. on the day, mate. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's it's pretty wild. It is pretty wild because for a while there, I thought the top four was absolutely set mm. and no one was going to touch the yep. top four. I thought it was always going to be that five and six spot. Mm. Who's going to make that five and six? Mm. But it's just like I said, it's just blown wide open again mm. because you know you know cans have kind of tripped over a little bit mm. and teams have figured out Keanu a little bit more mm. and um they're not clicking the way they were southeast with their injuries mm. we know they've had their struggles with that all season for, well geez yeah. even last season going yeah. back to last season so that's frustrating because they were playing really good basketball New Zealand feel for them yeah. I mean getting hit with COVID isn't fun um, I'm sure they've not been out of really fully scrimmage and, and do all that. So mm. um, they didn't play a game for, what was it? Like 18 days. 18 days. Yeah. See, that's crazy. Yep. That's uh, that's <laughs> unheard of in the middle of a season. Especially so. when you've got some teams playing six games in that, it, in well, that exactly, amount of time. Exactly. So, you know, it's it's not ideal. It's mm. not ideal. I yeah, I honestly couldn't tell you who the second best team is right now because, like I said, it just depends on the day. wonder if it's Adelaide. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, let's go. Th- well, let's start with the Brisbane Bullets before we go to some of those teams. Yep. They got a win over yeah. the Perth Wildcats and they just looked like they played with a lot more heart. All of a sudden they were a little bit rejuvenated. Mm-hmm. Maybe just having Tanner Krebs and Tyler Johnson back in the lineup helped yep. that. I mean... It was great to see Tanner play so well again. Yeah. He was right back to the form he was before he hurt his hurt his ankle. Yeah, so that was. that was great. Nathan Sobey was terrific. Um, Greg Vandage had his first win as a coach yeah. after they finally confirmed him as coaching for the rest of the season. So after what we talked about last week, I think that was a, a relief that they yeah, they at least did that. Um, I'll ask you about the Wildcats afterwards because it's a real could be a real crucial loss for them. Yeah. But you happy for the Bullets to get that one? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. It's. Uh yeah, it was it was a interesting game. It was mm. a very interesting game, and even just listening to it, you know, you you heard Gibbo say nearly every single possession. Oh, there wasn't much in that one, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just. And it's it's been a theme across the league right now. Is every trip down the floor there seems to be a whistle? Yes. So th- there's just really been no flow to any of these games. Mm. So it's been frustrating to watch mm. um, this round especially. Mm. Um, but yeah, look, uh, Brizzy came out. Whether it's because they beat the Cats last time and they yeah. were had that bit of confidence going mm. in. Um, but, uh, you know, Krebs coming in and, and being uh, just energy, just mm. all that energy. Um, came in not shy, first yep. touch, jacked up a triple, <laughs> yes. cashed it, I'm pretty sure he did yeah. too. Was was uh, was good for them. Mm. I think he, they, they are missing that energy and I think Gak as well coming in yes. and he was He's really terrific. good for them. Yeah. Um, he had, you know, I think it was three or four double-digit point games before yeah, he, he got hurt yeah. and then coming back in and just just being long and that defender yeah. and um, well, you don't see Bryce Cotton getting a potential no, game winner blocked very blocked, often I know he was really good with that and um, he's one of those guys that is long enough to be able to block his yeah. shot without taking away his landing space so um, no they were really good they were really good I think uh, it meant a lot to them as mm. you could see at yeah. the end of the game and um, all getting around Vanderjack was was really cool to see. Yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. Um, I, I'm relieved that he's locked in as well for the rest of the season. That would, like we talked about last week, it would have been a almost a disaster yeah, to try to bring somebody yeah. in from from the outside. At the same time, how much are the Wildcats going to rue this one because they they would have penciled it in, um, and then to miss 18 free throws cool. during the game, including Bryce missing missing four of them, which is very unusual for him. Corey Webster couldn't hit a free throw either, no. which is surprising for such a good shooter. And then Tayshawn Thomas at the end had his 
had the yips. Um, I mean, is it too simple to say that they lost because of the free throws? I mean, really, they did. Mm. That, that was the difference. Mm. They should have won by double digits in regulation. That's mm. at the end of the day, you know, that's... I mean, Bryce giving away cheeseburgers is unheard of. <laughs> when yes. has that ever happened? I don't think it ever has. No, no. So, uh, yeah. You shoot 94% before that? Yeah, 94% went uh, one of three in that mm. uh, on that time he gave away cheesy. So, uh, it, was, it was really odd to see and it's just one of those games that, mm. you know, it all comes crashing down and no one can make one. Mm. And um, when your two best shooters can't make a free mm. throw, then it kind of rolls through the team a little bit. Um, but look, I think the cats were like they were still decent yeah. throughout the game. Um, I think they did a lot right. They they won they the did, rebound count did. again for Got the second straight count. game. Yep. I mean, to get to the foul line forty times, you're doing something right. Yeah. Being being aggressive, yeah, yeah. So I think you're right. I don't think I don't think they did a whole lot wrong no. except just not knocking down their yeah, shots. Didn't make free throws. I I assume that uh, they're going to have a whole <laughs> training session just shooting free throws. Mm. So which again isn't a terrible thing sometimes. Mm. You know, I think just relocking in with that mm-hmm. kind of thing. I mean, we saw it with Sydney yes. <laughs> yes. earlier in the season where they couldn't make a free throw as a team either. Um, so hopefully for them, it's just this one game mm. and then it's it's done. Mm. And hopefully they don't have the yips going forward from the line. Does this sort of loss really hurt, though? I mean, this was a chance for them to keep themselves in the hunt for the top four, yeah. let alone cement themselves in the top six. Is yep. that going to be one that they really kick themselves about, especially to have lost to Brisbane twice now? Well, that's it. I think it's this in the last Brisbane mm. game. I think these are the two that could come back to hurt them a little bit. Mm. Um, you know, got out of jail against Melbourne as well, you know, yes. so that's one that could have gone mm. bad. But I think that uh, these two certainly hurt. They mm. certainly hurt. And it's, um, yeah, I... I it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out in the next few weeks with, with these three or four teams vying for those two spots, really. Um, well, it's hard to see who misses out out of that group now. I mean, yeah, you've got the is. Wildcats, the Jack Jumpers, and the 36ers. One of them's going to be unlucky, and that I guess that's assuming that the top four still, stay, that still stay where they are, which is probably no guarantee. No, I, I don't think it is. And for mine, I think Cairns is one that is a bit of a scary one because mm-hmm. I think just the way they play – they're one of those teams that could all of a sudden drop a couple and then, mm. you know, drop their bundle a bit and then all of a sudden fall down that ladder a yes. little. And oh, I have no idea who's going <laughs> to make make it. But that I think that loss will uh, certainly hurt them a bit in the long run. Yeah. Um, the Tasmania Jack Jumpers, we talked about last week how unusual it was to see how they played the mm. last couple of games in their fourth quarters. They had a really good... Really good week against the Illawarra Hawks and the New Zealand Breakers. Yep. But at the same time, they probably got both teams at the right time. They so did. the Hawks without Michael Frazier and Tyler Harvey. Yep. Um, they're two leading scorers. You take 36 points out of the team and the guys, the two guys that have the ball in their hands when you yep. want to score the most. So, I mean, it was almost a free hit for the Hawks given that situation. But the Jack Jumpers still had to take care of business and they did and they, they won big. They still beat them by 27 yep. points. So it was a big win. Um and then they got the breakers at the right time. The breakers playing their first game in eighteen days, yeah. but they still had to do it, and they still won. Did you did you feel like they got back to more Jack Jumpers like basketball? Yeah, they did. They did. I think you saw, especially in the Illawarra game, just that spread of scoring from from yeah. everyone. You know, no one was overly out, outstanding. Mm. Um, everyone was just really solid yeah. and, and kind of played their game, which is um, the Jack Jumpers that we've we've come to know. Mm. So, I mean, look, you take. <laughs> You take all that scoring out of Illawarra on a team mm. that can barely score as it is. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's going to be tough for them, especially yeah. against a, such a defensive-minded team. Mm. So that was uh, that was never going to end well for the Hawks, unfortunately. No, no. Um, and then, yeah, look, they, they ran into uh, New Zealand on a, on a good time mm. for, for the Tassie. So, and on the flip side, New Zealand probably <laughs> mm. frustrated to pick up, oh. you know, a Tassie game yep. right there. Yep. Um, the worst team for them to come up against oh, in their first so. game back. I think so. They needed a team to, to be able to get their rhythm going yeah. a bit. And mm. you can see they just, they just didn't really have it. Yeah. And that's what happens when you don't play a game in yeah. 18 days. Mm-hmm. You know, you can train all you want, but there's nothing like uh, a game fitness and just game rhythm. So, no, look, Tassie's looking good. I think they've kind of turned the corner a little bit. And that doesn't surprise me at all that mm. their little crappy stint was only a, a couple <laughs> yeah. games. So, yeah. Um, no, it's good to see. I, I, I really enjoy watching Tassie play. How much fun is Scott Roth? Oh, it's awesome. How, how good is it to have him in our in our league? Yeah, it's, it's great. It's great. And he just seems like that guy that you want to play for. Yep. I think uh, you'd be hard to find someone around the league that wouldn't want to play for him yeah. just the way he has your, your back as a player mm. and just his energy in general. Yeah. You know, he's going to tell you how it is. It doesn't mm. matter who you are, whether yep. you're the star import or, you know, the 
the DP is going to go at you the same. Mm. And you want that in a coach. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't want a coach playing favourites or anything mm. like that. And he seems like that guy that is just tells you how it is. And yeah. it's it's really good to see. And I think he, we've mentioned it before, but he is that perfect guy for, for Tassie. Yeah, it sure is. Um, last thing on Tassie, um, you wanted Josh Majette to be more mm. aggressive and look to score a bit more. And he had two pretty good games. Yeah, he did. He did. Teams are starting to figure him out though. So... Mm pushing him off the three-point line and kind of letting him shoot those little mid-range mm-hmm. uh, jumpers, which isn't his strong suit. Mm-hmm. Um, but he certainly has been a lot more aggressive. Mm-hmm. He has been a lot more aggressive, and I think that he can probably lift it again, realistically, because sure. you know there is a lot of times where I feel he does play that facilitator a lot more, mm-hmm. um, which I'm sure is something that he's been spoken to about. Yep. Because you know last year he'd have games where he'd come out and have 40, mm-hmm. Because he can, yes, <laughs> you yes, know. Yeah. I think he needs to go back to that a little bit just because this team doesn't have a lot of scoring power, mm. you know, compared to some of the other no, teams yeah, that are yeah. vying for a championship. Yeah. Um, but, look, I think he's I think he's just been really solid for mm. them yeah. again. And, um, yeah, just, just been tough. So mm. he, he did. He had a good round. What have the New Zealand Breakers done to – get the horrible run oh, that they've had, God. which dates back three years now. What, yeah. I don't know what they've done. How, how many mean, mirrors have they broken? Oh, how many yeah. ladders have they walked under? <laughs> it's it's un- crazy. It's unbelievable. So they didn't play a game for 18 days, and then, like we said, they come up against Tasmania, but they, they arrive in Hobart without Will McDowell-White, Rob yeah. Lowe, and Rayon Rapper. So even, even if at full strength, it's tough to come off a break like that when every other team is in a rhythm, and then you lose lose three of your most important players, including your point guard. Um, I think Modi Mayall was baffled by this as well. All of a sudden, they still can't get in a groove because they have eight days before they play their next game. They don't, they don't play a game at all in round 12. Yeah. So they don't play a game until next Wednesday night. Um, I don't get it. <laughs> I just, I no. can't do anything but feel for them. Yeah, you, you got to feel for them. And uh, you really felt that they were missing Will McDowell-White the other yeah. night. Just that uh, cool head, mm-hmm. I guess, is their point guard. You know, sure. you saw, saw some of the young boys come in and turn over, turn over, turn over. Mm-hmm led to layups and which I mean that happens when you're a young guy coming against probably the second best overall defensive team in the league Um, and the the highest pressure defensive team oh absolutely Um, that's going to happen it's going to happen and trust me I've I've been part of it before (laughs) (laughs) Uh, where young young guards don't know how to handle that pressure Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean to Tassie's credit they they did what they had to and But yeah, no, you, you do feel for New Zealand because they just keep getting the short yeah. straw. And uh, but it's almost worse now to have that eighteen days off, and now not now still can't get in a rhythm of you've got eight more days. Surely you can. Yeah. And they had to reschedule games. Surely yeah. they could have rescheduled one of the, their games in, in this in this eight day period. For sure, I think really all that means is they're going to play a lot of games in a short well, amount of do. time later. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, they've still got eleven games to play, yeah. and there's only five weeks of the season to go. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot in that last three or four weeks, I think. But um, no, it's hopefully they can get healthy because they're a legit mm. title contender when they're healthy for sure. So are the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix when they're healthy, but all mm. of a sudden we already knew that they'd be playing last weekend. Last weekend without Ryan Brokoff, Gary Brown, and Joe Chi, and then yeah. against the Brisbane Bullets, um, they lost Alan Williams as well, um, and it showed against the Thirty Sixes. Yeah. They they fought hard and they still made it a contest and. I know Simon Mitchell still felt afterwards that they let 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 the game slip, well, they but did. they they did. But at the same time, I I thought they were really brave to to fight. How shorthanded they mm-hmm. were! They'd just played six games in seventeen days. We talked last week about how you weren't quite willing to tip the bullets against them, and you were, yeah. you were right because they still hammered the bullets because the bullets were still shorthanded as well without Johnson and and Krebs, and I think Gak was missing that mm. game as well. So um, yeah, the the Phoenix have earned a break now. They don't. I don't think they play until. Until New Year's Day now, yeah, so they've okay. they've earned that little bit of a break. Yep. But um, yeah. Well, what do you make of their situation? Yeah, look, I mean, they've been unbelievable in this six games. Mm. Um, I think <laughs> it's no coincidence that they've got some bodies down now. Yeah. You're know, playing a lot of games and mm. a lot of days, including mm-hmm. travel, yeah. is is tough on the body. It really is, and especially these high minute players. Um, it's not overly surprising. Um. Williams was a bit of a freak one with his ankle. Hmm. I mean, that's something that you can never prepare for. So um, hopefully that's not too bad. But But the others are either soft tissue or sort of joint injuries, aren't they? Yeah, which is never good. Hmm. Never good. So I think Rowdy needs to uh, 
yeah, he, he needs to be wrapped in bubble wrap because mm. he's uh, he's been so injury prone recently, which is really frustrating. I'm sure it's frustrating for yeah. him. It's so important to them because when he's healthy and out there, they look so good. Oh, yeah, he's just the energy guy again, mm. you know? Mm. I mean, yeah, his shooting hasn't been like we all thought it was going to be, but I also don't think they look for it as much as mm-hmm. we all thought they were going to. Yep. Um, but he's just that energy on defense, his length on the boards, mm. and he's so important for them. Mm. And he's, he's a big reason why they're so tough. Yeah. Um, but I mean, look, Creek is putting every one of those guys on his back and saying, sure. let's go. Yeah. So yeah, I think, uh, at least they get a bit of a break now, yeah. hopefully get some bodies good to go and mm. get those younger guys kind of on the floor a bit more and, and let those older guys mm. rest a bit and get their bodies right and hit the ground running come uh, mm. New Year's. I want to get your thoughts on the Adelaide 36ers, Cody. Um, mm. they're starting to play this type of basketball we thought they would and yeah. I think it's all led by Robert Franks and Antonius Cleveland. They've yeah. both been been terrific. I think they're bringing the energy, bringing the production. We all thought that they they would. Um, still got Ian Clark to come in. So we didn't see him on Christmas Eve, but we know the sort of impact he'll be able to have. Um, so they've strung three wins together now, and they've got a couple more home games to, mm-hmm. to come. Um, do you lo- How much do you like what you're seeing of them, and what sort of an impact can Ian Clark still have? Oh, look, they're playing better basketball for sure. For sure. I think they still need a lift another level or two to be legit contenders. Mm-hmm. Um, in saying that, if they slot into that five or six spot, I wouldn't want to be playing no. them. Um, I think Clark will come in and, like we've mentioned before, he'll give just that experience and I'm sure he already has mm. um, just at trainings. But just that experience, that extra um, target, that extra guy that you've got to take that extra mm. step outside, mm-hmm. free up Franks and DJ inside. Um, and just that leadership. Mm. But Cleveland and Franks have been unbelievable, just, I think, leading by example. Um, But across the board, they've they've been a lot better. Mm. Um, We've seen Nick Marshall come in and Mm -hmm. give really good minutes Mm. and really good energy. Mm. Um, And, you know, I I think it's still with guys like DJ who haven't come out and really shown what they have in the past. Mm. I think if they can get him going again, then all of a sudden it's... Yeah, how do you stop Adelaide, mm. you know? Um, defensively, I think they still need to pick it up a little bit, mm. but I think that'll come yeah. with, uh, with the inclusion of Ian Clark. I actually feel like they're playing well with this starting group that mm. CJ settled on with Kai Soto staying in there with DJ off the bench. And yeah. if that stays that way, I mean, is there a better sixth and seventh man in the league? Or potentially, have you ever ever seen a better sixth and seventh man than DJ and Ian Clark? Yeah, not really. That's <laughs> uh, fairly, fairly impressive, isn't it? Mm. Um, look, I'm not... Sure, Adelaide are getting out of Kai Soto what they thought they would. No, um, no, they're not. But I just feel like having that five minutes into the game to all oh of a sudden yeah, be able sure. to turn to DJ, sure. it seems to be working all right. Well, and, and that's the thing. I think you don't need DJ starting if you've got Franks on there anyway. Sure. And to have Kai in there just as that bigger body, mm. um, you know, you've seen him probably more on the defensive end than anything, just the ability to change shots. Mm. Not so much his shot blocking, but the ability mm. to change yep. shots, I think, has been big for them. And then, yeah, inserting DJ five, six minutes into a game. Mm. Goodness me. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that's that's ridiculous. And then being able to put it in Clark mm. as well is is uh, just another level above. Mm. Melbourne United. We've, we've talked about how they probably can't afford to lose too many games. Yeah. And they did the job against Cairns. They, look, they look, looked good and, and kept kept winning. But, you know, going to Sydney, like we talked about, without Golding... Um, at nine and twelve, um, it's getting tough for them. Are they? Yeah. Are they almost done? Pretty close. Mm. Pretty close. It's the twelve losses that's uh, really, really bad for them. I think. Well, no one, no one else in the race has more than eight. No, exactly. So, and I mean, the fact that they've played so many more games than yeah. a lot of the teams above mm. them is, uh, yeah, it's it's not good signs for them. Only one home game to go to. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, look. I think they could still sneak in, but mm-hmm. they'd probably have to. I think they'd probably have to win out from here. I think you're right. Yeah, um, just to just to make it an effort because yeah, all those teams above them are all probably playing a bit better basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, Melbourne has really stepped it up in the last few rounds. Yep. I think they're playing a lot better basketball, oh, but I think a lot has to go right for them. Yeah, um, and they need to take care of their own business and probably can only afford to drop maybe one more. Mm. Um, even that will be pushing it. Yep. And then they've got to rely on other teams, which is yeah. never a good no. thing. I think you're right. I think their, their basketball they're playing right now is 
potentially the, they could be the second best team yeah. behind Sydney. They're in that mix. They're playing that well. It's just that they left themselves so much work to do, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. And they took a long time to click. And, you know, I've been harping on it all season, the importance of Shea Illy. Yeah. It's no surprise that as soon mm-hmm. as he's inserted into this team and has been into this team for more than one or two games, mm-hmm. they're playing a lot better basketball. Absolutely. So it's, it's frustrating. And, you know, it's just one of those things that um, – Early in the season, those couple of games that they just dropped, even mm. the Cats game, yeah. they should have won. We talked about how crucial that oh, would be. Massive, yeah. you know. All of a sudden, they're ten and eleven, 10 and instead 11 of nine and, and twelve. Yeah. That looks so much different than nine and twelve. So, yeah, lots has to go right for them, unfortunately. Mm. All right, Cody. Before we take a deep breath, let me quickly run through the results. If anything jumps out, let me know, and otherwise, we'll get onto our awards for this week. But going back to Wednesday night that we did preview last week, and the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix in the battle of two teams that were missing. Between them, missing eight eight players, yeah. it was it was a it was a tough one for both teams. With the Phoenix beat the Bullets one hundred four to seventy seven, and then again the Hawks without Fraser and, and Harvey, the Tasmania Jack Jumpers were too much, winning eighty seven to sixty. Open air game on on Friday night in Melbourne. It was a it was a spectacular sight and a, a pretty good game between two two good teams. Melbourne United beat the Cairns Taipans eighty four to eighty one, and then Christmas Eve the Adelaide thirty six is against the Phoenix ninety four to eighty eight. Christmas Day, the Sydney Kings beat Melbourne United 101 to 80. Boxing Day, the Jack Jumpers beat the Breakers 93 to 82. And then finally, Tuesday night, the Bullets 97 to 93 in overtime over the Wildcats. Anything you want to touch on before we take a break, Cody? No, mate, I think we uh, touched on everything that needed to be. Okay, back on Hoop 7's Basketball Hustle right now, and I'm delighted to be about to be joined by the Adelaide 36ers Hall of Famer, the the birthday boy who has to celebrate his Christmas on every morning, the one and only Scott Ninnis, who will help me decide the Galen winner as the best NBL team man for, for round 12 in the NBL and catch up on everything else. And once we catch up with him, we'll get stuck into all of that, find out everything that's happening in the world of the Adelaide 36ers before we come back. And I'll be rejoined by Cody here on Hoop7's Basketball Hustle as we talk some of the other big talking points in the NBL and also take a look ahead to what we've got to look forward to in round 13. Okay, I'm now with Scott Ninnis, the Adelaide 36ers Hall of Famer. How did you go, Scott? Did you survive your birthday and Christmas for another year? Never, nothing ever good about getting another year older, mate. Uh, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty cruisy, relaxing day. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, topped it off yesterday with a 41 mm. degree day, and uh, I happened to be in the Barossa uh, with with a group from Melbourne, and it was 41 here, it would have been 45 up there. Mm. So uh, yeah, I'm still uh, still trying to cool down, it seems. But uh, no, no, it's, it's it's good, mate. Like it's. Uh, my 36s are on a on a mini roll, I guess you could say. Three three wins in a row. Uh, you know, whichever way you look at it, um, it's been ugly at times, mm. but it's still better than three losses mm-hmm. in a row. So you know, we go into a game uh, tomorrow night against the Brisbane Bullets. Who, uh, uh, let's face it, we we should win. Yes. You know, if we're fair dinkum, uh, well, for fair dinkum, we should win most games at home. Mm. But um, you know, with that the Brisbane team that played last night. Um, that, that they should, we should be able to take care of them. So yeah, for, for the most part, uh, all good. No, very good to hear. You had a, you had a, the biggest ever camp you've done with the thirty sixes last week as well before Christmas. Did you, did you survive that? Just very <laughs> much, just one hundred and thirty <laughs> screaming kids over four courts, and uh, we got through that. I, you know, now I can, I can have a bit of a whinge about it, but uh, my my running mate, uh, the esteemed Mr. Ma, mm-hmm. was doing night shift mm-hmm. as well as doing that camp. So he came off a night shift into the straight straight to the camp to another night shift straight into the camp. Now wow. the good news the good news for him is uh, Adelaide doesn't have a fire, so he basically slept through the night anyway. <laughs> but. Still, but still, he was technically working, and uh, yeah, so that was uh, that was hard work. And we've uh, our January camp, we've actually sold out 
uh, 160 kids over five courts, which oh, is far and away the most we've ever had. So uh, it was going to have to be a couple of early nights leading up to that as well. Mm. No, definitely. All right, we'll 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 keep track of how you're going with that, Scott. But for, before I get to the, <laughs> before we get to the Galen Award for this week, you touched on the 36s. So three wins in a row now. Um, good, you know, a solid win Christmas Eve against the the Phoenix. Obviously, they were a little bit shorthanded, but you still had to take care take care of business. So. I feel like momentum's building. I feel like the team's starting to come together. Franks and Cleveland are leading the way, playing really well, and we've still got to see Ian Clark, so you'd assume he'll play now Thursday night once he's once he's been in town for a week, so he should be right to go. Um, how much do you like what you're seeing right now, and how much do you still need to see, see improve? Look, I, I'll probably say the same thing to you that I, I've been saying all year. I still think the 36ers have got more room for improvement with, than any team in the competition and that, that that is a great thing as, as long as that improvement does does fulfill itself but winning form is good form I think you, you know Cleveland has, has been awesome and uh, at times spectacular with some of the stuff he does on the court you know one of the things I, I've loved has been seeing Mitch McCarron get fired up mm. and uh, you know for a guy who's, who's generally fairly uh, fairly laid back with most things he, he got a couple of uh, Boy, he got a he got a couple of no calls that mm. uh, you know got scratch across the face and there was no call and he had to get stitches and, in that to fix it up. Yeah, and and an unsportsmanlike foul that didn't get called late in the game yeah. that that he really really got him fired up, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Once again, and, and I love that. I think him aggressive uh, is is you know, if it's not the key to success of the 36ers, then it's not far away because then, you know, he ends up scoring 15 or 16 points. You know, the other guys are going to do their thing and, and it makes uh, makes everybody else really difficult to, uh, you know, makes us a tough team to defend. So I, that was a really pleasing thing for, for me. I, I told him that as well and uh, uh, not that he probably listens to me, but so uh, I feel that's a, that's a really important thing. And, and obviously with... Kai Soto starting, I think that's that's given us a real uh, shock arm. And then, yeah. you know, what DJ did off the bench in that last game, and, and, and I made comments uh, during the night that, you know, if he can embrace that role, well, not even embrace it, just, just you know, he doesn't have to be happy about yeah. it, but if he yeah. can, what he can do coming off the bench, he can play in this league for another five years and yeah. be a really, really important part of the part of the group. So there, there's been some really good signs. Obviously, you, you add someone of the quality of Ian Clark to that, and and you know we saw what he was able to do as far as you know adding to the quality of the Sydney yeah. Kings last year. Yeah. I think you know the signs the signs are you know are, are really good. Um, you know, and we, we're winning without uh, you know without playing we're playing really good basketball in patches. We start stringing that together and, and stringing, you know, quarters and uh, you know, the minutes and, and eventually games together. Then, uh, yeah, then the thirty six is going to be a problem in this league. Uh, no, absolutely, I agree with everything you said. And I, we, I talked to Cody about it before. DJ coming off the bench and then Ian Clark coming off the bench. I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a better sixth and seventh man on a team that, that I can remember. So I think it's a, a great weapon to have because the starting five's got enough weapons there with, with Franks and Cleveland and, and McCarron and, and Detch and, and Soto. I, I, I think it's a, a great weapon to have. So, yeah, like you said, DJ just has to accept it and, and deal with it and, and provide what he provides. And I think it's a, yeah, a, a great little weapon. That's a, a hell of a first seven that they've got. And then you've still got good depth with, with Drimmick and Galloway and everyone else. So, yeah, I actually think, like... Like I talked to Cody about, they could be the second best team in the league right now. It's really hard to work out who the second best team is by, behind the Kings, but it could be Adelaide. Yeah, it is, and, and, and talent-wise, you know, I don't think there's ever been any doubt about us you know, having the talent to be mm. successful. And I, I think with what you're saying with DJ is, is you know, it's his 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 demeanour doesn't change. No, so no. you never you never know if he's pissed off or not. Mm-hmm. Like he's, he just goes about his thing, but. You know, and and he's coming off the bench almost by accident mm, because he got yeah. he got he got injured and missed that game, and, and uh, Kai Soto made the most of his minutes. So, um, you know, you, you're obviously not going to change a good thing. And he's started three games in a row now, and I think that by injury they they found a perfect uh, you know everyone's perfect niche, mm. and and uh, um, so yeah, and sometimes <laughs> that's the way it happens. So I think it's. Uh, there are good signs that they need to come out and just just take care of Brisbane the way that they should take care of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think, and 
you know, obviously Sobey's up and about at the moment and, and uh, you know, Baines is always, a, you know, a big big target inside, but I thought Kai did really well on him yeah. a couple of weeks back when we got him here and, and, you know, we should have, you know, the people that can make Sobey's life difficult at, at, at least. Um, I'd like to not see him get every call uh, like he did last <laughs> night. Yes. Uh, that was astonishing mm. at that time. Every time he threw his arms in the air or... or, yeah. or Screamed out, he seemed to be on the free throw line. But yeah, once again, when you're the aggressor, good things happen to you. And uh, it's been good, you know, seeing after, you know, he, he probably had his ups and downs early in the year to see him have back to back 30 games. But uh, you know, between, you know, Sunday Detch and Antonius Cleveland and Mitch McCarran, and hopefully we've got, got enough bodies there that should be able to make uh, life difficult for him tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely. You would think the defence they cop from your guys other than what Perth was able to provide, should be a little bit more um, intense. Now, we're here for the Galen Award, the best team man from round 12 in the NBL, Scott. Um, there's some weeks where I've got a lot of names to throw at you and it's difficult to make a decision. I didn't have that problem this week. I There's only one name that jumps out at me, so I'm going to throw him at you. If you if somebody else excited you, let me know. But I, I just think the difference we saw in the Sydney Kings when Xavier Cooks is playing and when he's not playing was so significant. His performance on Christmas Day, 24 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists. I just thought far and away the best player on the court. He's the reason the Kings won that game so comfortably. So I'm going to nominate him for you, but you're welcome to nominate somebody else if you like. Oh, no, mate. I don't think there's any, any doubt in that. Oh, I mean, he's... he's... Yeah, you know, the best all-round player in the in the competition. I I think uh, you, know, you know guys like Antonius Cleveland might might say hello as well. But I think what he provides from scoring and rebounding um, and passing the ball and just his energy is is you know tip, tips the the Kings from being a you know probably a finals team to a championship contender. I don't I don't necessarily subscribe to the the fact that he's the MVP of the league. I know that there's a there's a lot of people that pump him up to to be that, and and I I also think that you know his his you know, I'm being very pedantic here, by the way, but, you know, like his perimeter game and free throw shooting game mm-hmm. has to improve for him to be an NBA player in the future. But uh, in our league, there's no doubt he's a superstar. So uh, no argument for me this week, mate. Yep, no, I, I couldn't find anyone else that jumped out just like he did. And I think sometimes you notice just how important somebody is when they're not there. And I think the difference with the Kings when he's not playing is is pretty stark. So Xavier Cooks will be the Galen winner for this week. Thank you for, for helping me with that. Scott, thank you to Sports Card World for, for helping us out on the on the show as well. And I hope you enjoy the, the next week and we'll do it all again next week. Looking forward to it, mate. Always enjoyable. Okay, I'm back now with Cody here on Hoop Seven's Basketball Hustle. Before we get to a preview of the upcoming round, Cody, um, let's see if there's anything on your mind. We're seeing a hell of a lot of fouls called in yeah. the NBA right now. We talked about that double overtime game last week, which was incredible. I think it was, or 64 fouls, 50, 79, 79 free, free throws, throws yeah. taken between the Phoenix and the Kings, and we saw the trend continue this week. Um, how much does it take away from the sp- just from a fan's point of view to start mm. with? Before we talk about the players, how much does it take away from the spectacle if we're trying to sell an yeah. entertainment product yeah. like we talked about before? It takes away from it a lot. Mm. So, big talking points this season has been about the delay of games and yeah. the little half a shot after mm. a whistle, right? Mm. And the refs calling that delay of game. It's it seems right now, especially this round, I think, um, and even even the last couple rounds, I think. There seems to be a whistle nearly every other trip down the floor, um, whether it's off the ball foul or someone going to the rack. And mm. we we saw a lot in last night's game with the Cats in yeah. Brisbane. A lot of really late fouls. Yeah. I think it was about five or six yeah. that were called really late. Yeah. So well, you know, again, I think there was sixty odd free throws between the two teams. Right, lots lots of free throws. Mm. And look, uh, a lot of them there. Probably, mm. I think. We need to figure out if it's the the players just not doing the right thing a lot, or mm. if or if the refs are starting to just blow a little bit too many. Mm. Um, and you know, it's it's a very fine line. And mm. I think 
the refs have the toughest job in the, in the game, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, no one's ever happy with them. Everyone's always complaining <laughs> exactly. to them. And, and Even moan. if you get a call 100% right, 50% of the people are still unhappy with you. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I think we've kind of seen a bit of protection with them in the uh, coaches' challenges this year because there's yeah. a lot. Even last night, I think there was one um, on the break where Thomas chased down Jace Cadet mm. and it looked like it looked like there was no contact mm. and they, they called a foul and Jace did a really good job and a really smart job of cutting off Thomas and then kind of leaning back and then extending. But I actually, on the replay, it didn't look like there yeah. was any contact. No. You know, wasn't overturned. It looked sounded like it was look, looked at pretty quickly and then yep. just straight onto it. So I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one, but it, it does take away from the game because mm. there is no flow. There's no rhythm to it. Mm. Um, you know, teams don't go up and down more than three or four times before mm. there's a break in it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm not sure what the answer is. Um, but I think from the players' point of view, I think it's frustrating because there isn't as much consistency as they'd like. Mm. As a player, you just want consistency. Mm. If whether it's a bad whistle, good whistle, whatever. Yeah. If you're doing it consistent, then we can adjust to it. Um, it's not even from game to game so much. It's sometimes quarter quarter. <laughs> all the same referees in the same yeah, game yeah. have different interpretations yeah. of the same thing. Yeah, for sure. And again, like I've I've never done refereeing courses or anything mm-hmm. like that, so I'm not sure. I'm not a hundred percent sure of what they look at, whether they can call fouls out of their zone, mm-hmm. uh, all that. But we are seeing a bit of that mm-hmm. where there's mm-hmm. a referee say right on the baseline, and the referee at halfway will call it. Yeah, um, with with the ball in the paint mm-hmm. and. Look, I, I understand that there's three of those guys out there so they can see as much as possible. Um, but, yeah, it's 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 been an interesting one because I, I do feel like there's been a uh, ridiculous amount of, of fouls called in this past few rounds. Mm. So, yeah, it's, it, it, it is taken away a bit from the game. But, mm. I mean, it is part of the game. So, it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's a tough one. Is it too simplistic to say that you just tell them to call – Less fouls and, and <laughs> only call the really obvious ones, or is that is that too simplistic of an approach? A bit too simplistic, I think. It's <laughs> yeah. again, like I said, I I don't know if it's I don't know how you fix it. I mm. don't know what the refs are looking for. I don't know what they're because um, I know before every game that they get given certain things to yeah. look at, yeah. and you know the coaches are usually aware of that because mm. they speak to the coaches before games, so. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's a frustrating one. And again, I, I don't envy the refs at all because, mm. yeah, no one's on their team. No. <laughs> I, I, yeah, have the utmost respect for them because they do such a thankless job. Mm. And, you know, obviously without it, mm. without those guys, we wouldn't be playing. So, um, yeah, not an easy fix, mm. but I think, uh, I think something needs to happen. Mm. Before we get to our preview, have you ever had a referee at any point in your career that you've had a good relationship with that you might want to? Give a shout out. To, oh, a shout out to. Oh, look, I I try to uh, be fairly cordial with all the refs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I especially with the senators. I, you know, being being the captain, I tend to be that middleman between my squad mm-hmm. and, and the refs when I'm on the court. Yeah. Um, and between CD and you. Yeah. And the refs. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, and look, I I feel like I can go to most refs around the league and and talk to them, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm, I obviously get annoyed at some times and I probably explode more than I, I should at points, but I feel like most of the refs can come to me if mm-hmm. there's something going on in my squad mm-hmm. and say, look, you need to calm this guy down, you know, be careful of this. And I think you need that. I think mm-hmm. teams need that. And I think it seems like there's a bit of um, angst between players and referees in the NBL right now. Mm. So, it's, yeah. I mean, we saw Nico Fernandez last night mm. do an unbelievable job, and I think he's been really good all mm. season mm. with uh, being that guy who can go and talk to a player yes. and calm a coach down. Yep. And it's probably because he's more in the spotlight. He's, he's just mm. been more in the spotlight yeah. and on the TV and in talking distance to the to the microphones than, he, than any other ref he, at the he, moment. He feels more, maybe he seems like he's more... Some of them are very defensive if you mm-hmm. criticise them. Oh, he, for sure. He seems more open to actually have a conversation about the decisions he makes yeah. than maybe some of them. Oh, definitely, definitely. And, you know, you make a call and then all of a sudden you've got 
five guys on the court, <laughs> yeah. coaches and, and bench players yelling at you. Yes. I understand why some of them get defensive. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. So I, I totally understand that. But uh, yeah, look, he, he goes, he explains, he, mm. he does a really good job. Um, and look, there are lots of referees around like that, mm. you know, that will actually explain what they saw and, you know, whether it's whether you agree with it or not, okay, that's what you saw. That's mm. fine. Mm. You, you've got to accept that, mm-hmm. right? That's what they saw. That's how they saw it. Then, okay, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, look, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an odd one. It's mm. an odd one. But you, you, I think you do need to have a relationship with them, right? Yes. I won't ask if there's any you don't have a good relationship, <laughs> relationship with, but what I will say is that I don't think you've ever had a bad relationship with a, a referee as much as what Chase Buford has with Chris Reid. Oh, my Reed. goodness, No. Yeah, no, those two, uh, <laughs> yeah, those two really butt heads, don't they? <laughs> they do. I'm, uh, I'm actually surprised Chase didn't get thrown out this yep. round. Yep. Um, you know, he, Chris Reed gave the bench a tech because they've walked on the floor mm. and and was jawing, um, and obviously Chase Buford didn't understand that <laughs> mm-hmm. and thought that mm. it was directed at him. Yes. Um, and he cl- clapped in his face and said, "It's good, good job, good job." Yeah, yeah. I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we've seen someone thrown out this year, have we? No, we haven't. No. 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 And I'm um, actually, I am still not sure how he <laughs> didn't get tossed in mm-hmm. that because the carry on was mm. wild. It was. it was crazy. Jesus Christ, created some good memes as well. Oh, it certainly did. He, certainly did. He, he's great at that, actually. And proved that, uh, yeah, <laughs> she is very good at that. And proved that uh, my guy Kev Lish can still play a bit oh, of D yeah, because yeah, he yeah. was in between them the whole time <laughs> saying, we need you, we need you, we need you. Stop, stop, stop. So. Um, Gee, he's still such a calm head, isn't he? He doesn't. Oh yeah. He doesn't ever raise a sweat. No, never did. Never will. <laughs> cool, calm, and collected. Love it. All right, all right, Cody. Let's get to round thirteen in the NBL, and we've got a day off on Wednesday night, and then we're straight back into it on Thursday with a full round of of action to look forward to, and an interesting game to look forward to. We'll see Ian Clark's debut for mm-hmm. the Adelaide Thirty Sixes on Thursday night in Adelaide. They're playing the Brisbane Bullets, coming off a. Off a win, obviously CJ Bruden and Greg Vandejat know know each other very well, so that's a little bit of added added interest. But yeah, Adelaide just can't afford to drop this one. No, they can't. They can't. I mean, Brizzy, you know, rolling off a, a very good win. Um, but I think, I mean, yeah, hopefully we see Ian, Ian Clark. Yeah, be, yeah. I think we've we've it, got to. I'm sure he's got to play a certain amount of games, right? Yeah, you got to play. Seven, I think it's a quarter of the okay. games, and yeah. he's been—he would have been here for a week by now. So yeah. you'd think the jet lag is worn you, off by then. You'd think so, and you'd think you'd again. We saw it with Sydney; he slotted in seamlessly, mm. and yep. I think he'd do that with this squad mm-hmm. too, especially the way they play. Yep. I think Adelaide probably get this one. I think they really stamp their authority and tell the rest of the league that they're here and, mm. and actually mean business now. Great game to look forward to on Friday night. Grand final rematch. Last time they played in the first. Rematch of this season that was a, a ter- terrific contest. This will be no different back at Kudos Bank mm-hmm. Arena on Friday night. Sydney Kings against the Tasmania Jack Jumpers. Yep. So Sydney, the far and away best team in the league right now, mm-hmm. like we've mentioned before in the show, and Tassie who have kind of hit their stripes again mm-hmm. and and are back to that defensive juggernaut and that mm-hmm. um, that Tassie team that we know. So I I think this should be a really good game. Mm-hmm. Um, this is all going to come down to how Tassie can guard Sydney. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just threats everywhere for the Kings and the way Zave plays. Jack mm. McVeigh's got his hands full yes. having a guard Zave. But look, I think he's done a really good job throughout the year guarding mm. those those bigs. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be an interesting one. It's going to be a very interesting one. I think Kings end up getting it just because they got that little bit extra firepower. Mm. Um, but I, I expect it to be a really good game. Yeah, so do I. Saturday, New Year's Eve. Got a double header. Yep. Um, before we get on to the games... What are your memories of playing on New Year's Eve? Oh, I think I played in Cairns for three of the five yes. years that I yep. uh, I played. So, yeah, look, New Year's Eve games are, are good. Um, had one in Illawarra as well. Um, yeah, so I played all but one year on, mm-hmm. on New Year's Eve. That was the year that I don't think I was there on New Year's Eve. Mm. It's probably my first year when I came in late. Oh, for the Kings. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was there, but we didn't play. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, look, it's always a bit of fun. Mm. Always a bit of fun. Um Play a game, go shower, get some food, go watch the fireworks. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's always good. It's, um, 
Yeah, certainly a lot different than playing on Christmas Day. It's that <laughs> yeah, much, it, a lot it, more it, relaxed. It's become a real tradition in both Wollongong and Cairns. Mm. Is it, it? Does it help that it's in a regional city that it becomes such a such an event for the whole town to get yeah. to get behind? Where almost everyone goes to the game yeah. and then they go out and bring in the new year afterwards. Yeah, ex- exactly. And I think that it's it's really good for the for those two teams. Mm. Um, Usually draw bigger crowds than normal, yep. so hopefully they can do that again. Yeah, I know in Cairns it's always a sellout. It's always their biggest game of the mm. season. And I remember probably going back five years, the the NBL took it off them. They mm. lost their New Year's Eve game for a yeah. year, and there was almost a riot. They, yeah, exactly. They, they threatened to pull out of the league altogether <laughs> if they didn't get their New Year's Eve game back. So they've got it back. Um, no, I, I think it's a good good occasion. I think uh, yeah, you, you're right. Unlike Christmas Eve, I think it's actually a good a good day to play games mm-hmm. and and to to bring in the occasion. So it starts in Wollongong. The Perth Wildcats, it's, uh, ever since they've moved to RSC Arena, they've generally been on the road this time of year. So they are either in Cairns or Wollongong to play a, a New Year's Eve game. So they go to Wollongong to play the Illawarra Hawks. Um, you assume the Hawks will have Fraser and Harvey back. So Fraser's first chance to play against his yeah. own team, which is which is nice. But, gee, the Wildcats will be pretty hungry to bounce back, won't they? Well, they they need this one. Mm. And you're right, Fraser's going to come out with a point to prove, yes. I think. Yeah. Um, but the cats, yeah, the cats need this one. Hmm. Desperately need this one to to stay in touch, and especially after, I guess, well, really, they did give it away hmm. against Brisbane. Um, so, look, I expect them to come out firing and, and ready to go, and I think they get that done. But yeah, Fraser's going to have something to say about it. I'm hmm. sure. Yeah. I, I expect him to have a good one. <laughs> yeah, so do I. I actually think I would be surprised if there's, if there's an upset. I think the Hawks. It's hmm. almost a free hit, and they they'll yeah. be fresh. They've had a good break, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how they go. And then we've got the Cairns Taipans, the Adelaide 36ers. Um, two teams that play exciting basketball. Keanu Pinder against his old team as well. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian Clark settling back in. Um, gee, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah, it should be a really good game. Um, and Cairns, Cairns need a win. Cairns need a win to just stay in touch with that top four. Um, you know, I think that we haven't seen the same bite from them mm. um, in the past few games but uh look coming up against Adelaide I think especially guys like Keanu will have mm-hmm. a, a point to prove again mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. um again this should this should be an awesome game you know there's some some really good games this this round and Adelaide after already playing yeah short turnaround yeah it is a short turnaround so look I, I think uh it's a tough one because Cairns haven't been great at home this year no um no. not a whole lot of teams have been fantastic at home mm. But, uh, look, I think Cairns get this one, um, but only just. Mm, no, it'll be a good game. And so will this one on Sunday. Mm. So the Tasmania Jack Jumpers um, playing host to the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Um, you'd assume the Phoenix get back Alan Williams, but probably still no Brokoff and no Brown and no no Joe Chi. So they're still a little bit undermanned, but at least they would have had a bit of a break yep. from those six games in 17 days. And the Jack Jumpers coming off playing on Friday night in Sydney. Um Again, two teams battling over a spot in that top four. Yeah. Um, a lot on the line. Yeah, there is. I think uh, Phoenix will come in fairly fresh and recharged. Um, the the advantage they've had in these in this little stretch they've had is they've had some young guys step up mm. and be able to play some big minutes, and have shown that they belong on the floor, mm. which is really cool. Um, so I think that's been a big advantage for them. Um, yeah, Tassie with again a, a short turnaround. Um, I think uh, look, I, I think the Phoenix get this one done purely because I don't I don't think they've got an answer for Creek. Yeah, yep. um, I mean he's proven in the past really month and a half that he is legit MVP contender yep. and probably leading by a fair way at this point yep. purely because he's been playing more sure, than anyone yeah. else. Gee, well, um, I mean, speaking about that, I mean you talked about Jack McVeigh having to guard Cooks on Friday night, and now he's got to guard Creek on Sunday. <laughs> Not a good few days for <laughs> no, the man, is it? No, <laughs> no I think uh, I think he'd love that challenge and, and fully embrace it. And um, I mean, it's what you want to do. You want to guard sure. the best guys around, mm. and uh, yeah, he's got his hands full. <laughs> he does. Um, second up on Sunday. Sorry, your tip was that Jack Jumpers? No, Phoenix. Phoenix. I think Phoenix, Phoenix get it done. Okay. Then second up on Sunday, um, Brisbane Bullets back at home hosting Melbourne United. Um, almost a free hit for the Bullets. Yeah. I mean, they could. Basically, end Melbourne season. They could, yeah. I think uh, I think if Brisbane get it done, then that's Melbourne done mm. for sure. Um, look, I think they'd obviously have Barlow and Golding back. Uh, yes, I assume so. I'd assume, but 
that makes them a different look team. Yeah. Um, I think that I think that Melbourne ended up getting it done because just purely off the form that they've they've had bar the Christmas Day game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with a full squad, they're they're you know just as good as anyone in that top six. I think, mm-hmm. um, especially now, just the way they've been playing. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think I think United get it done and kind of keep that little glimmer of hope mm-hmm. alive for the rest of the season. And then Monday night and. Guess what, Cody? It's back in Wollongong for Monday, a Monday what night game. What a surprise! <laughs> hopefully, this time of year, maybe it's not quite yeah, as bad because it's yeah. a it's the holiday. So hopefully, um, some more people t- can get to the game. But Illawarra Hawks hosting the Cairns Taipans. Both teams obviously coming off playing on New Year's Eve. What do you think? Yeah, it always seems to be a good game between these two. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah, oh, honestly, I, I'm I'm not sure about this one because. Uh, um, yeah, look, it's 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 going to be a tough one, and I think Cairns need to get this one mm. um, a, as well. Um, but a big round for Cairns, big round for Cairns. Hawks are just free swinging on everyone now, so yeah, they're at that point I think of the they could, they're going to play spoilers at times, aren't they? Yeah. they they're going to pick up a couple. They will. They absolutely will. And they're too talented a squad, especially mm. with Seaver and Fraser out there now, mm. and and Froling being Froling mm. still, and. Hopefully we get to see a lot more of Dan Greeter, which would be really yes, cool to see. Yes. Um, but I think Cairns get this one done um, purely because they have to. Yeah, I think they have to. Uh, they drop one or two of these and then all of a sudden they lose touch with that top mm. four and then they're battling for that five and six. Mm. And it's a long way back up. So if they if they want to stand themselves as legit contenders, they need to get that one done. Mm. And I, I, I think they will. Yeah, uh, I think you're right. It's just too important that they that they that they do. Um, all right, Cody, it's been a big show. Thanks for joining us once again. Thank you for um, cutting short your Christmas <laughs> celebrations so we could we could record a show. And I hope everyone enjoys it. I hope everyone had a great Christmas, and I hope everyone has a ha- has a happy New Year now as well. And our last show of 2022 now, Cody. So yeah. happy New Year to you. And I'll sign off and leave you with the the last words. Yeah, happy New Year to you, mate, and uh, to all the listeners. I hope it's uh, a safe and fun one.